So here are the must-watch videos from the Wingsound.com community. That's right. These videos come from members from all over the world who've uploaded their videos to Wingsound.com. Now, if you have a video or, hey, if you're in the area and want to come check out our studios, want to come hang out with us, upload your videos in person, make sure to hit us up, Rick and Mateo at Wingsound.com. Adabay Live shows us how to create a robotic vocal sound in Ableton Live. First of all, we're going to start off with putting my audio voice in the audio channel. We're gonna hit it. That's the way it's supposed to go. Now, we're gonna go into our audio effects and pick our vocoder. And our vocoder, we're gonna put it right here on the audio track. Now we need a carrier. Carrier we're gonna use, I like using the analog, um, the analog instrument. And we're gonna just hit some notes. Recoder, and we're gonna go here where it says noise and switch it to external. As in audio from, we're gonna use our analog. And here on the, on the analog channel, we're gonna just put send only. That's the way it's supposed to go. Hide Light 24 shows us how to create a snare flam effect in Reason. Get the flam effect actually going. Um, you can park in another note and then turn this thing on. Right there, that's a little thingy at the at the top of the knob. Um, that's your basic flam effect. The flam um, only controls the gate of this snare drum. It does not control the volume. And that is also one of the nasty parts with the flam effect, is if you want to create a nice flam effect, um, you will probably have to have to uh, control the volume while you're doing that. Uh, to set this one up, I'm going to use a NNXT instead. Um, and we take a pattern step sequencer. But anyways, to get the whole party started, you could go for a single drum and have the velocity controlling the level. Um, which means, if you take the matrix pattern sequencer over here, this is our velocity setting right there. Uh, the harder you're going to trigger it, the louder this thing is going to be like. So, if we are cranking up the tempo like this, you get this effect. Malcolm from ToysToNoise.com explains the difference between tick and sample based editing in Pro Tools. Let's say we're in sample base time. And if I select the conductor, this region now is floating kind of freely. So let's say this was a loop you just dragged into the screen or a drum loop you chopped out of a session. What you can do is you can say event identify beat. So here I can say the location is going to be a starting point and ending point. So if I want to make it an exact two bars, why don't I say starting at bar 30, ending at bar 32. And now we can see the grid has conformed. Make sure you follow Wingsound on Twitter and Facebook to stay connected to a stream of new videos as well as cool music production links.